Hello, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to Best Three Plays of the Week. This week we have Hold Down Steelwall Tactics, Brothers in Ice Force, and a somewhat overgrown scout. Enjoy the show. Let's start with a steel wall replay. This week's indestructible tanky is Daniel EQ 9912 from the EU region. Daniel EQ's role in bunker is the T32, and the standard battle is fought on Korea. The T32 follows the team's push east and pushes right to the front. This American heavy tank excels at hold down tactics, and the enemies will see nothing but a very strong turret. The T-32 holds its ground with the gunner calmly returning fire. The large enemy force is held back by a single unkillable heavy. The steel wall holds the enemies in place while the allies execute a flanking maneuver, eventually turning up behind the enemies. The opposing force is broken and Daniel EQ joins in on destroying the few that remain. It's game over. The block damage is over 9,000 with nearly 5k dishdown return. Daniel EQ played perfectly to the American Heavy strength. Staying for the moment on the EU servers, we have a game from Napa, who seems to think that the 60 ton E50 works fine as a scout tank. Let's see how it works out. The match is an encounter on Lakeville. Napa sits on top tier, but then again, so does everybody else. The, um, scout heads straight up the lake side road, spotting a third of the enemy force right at the start. The E-50 took a lot of damage, but the carcass of the dead leopard provides some cover. Napa keeps skirmishing until some Jedi instinct tells our scout to retreat into cover. The Skolder's ambush fails, and Napa pushes forward to taunt the enemies. It's a trap, of course, and enemies who take the bait are quickly cut down by allies. This scout has some serious teeth, and Napa takes the opportunity to do some damage where it will do the most good. It's time for the final push. The E-50 cripples a Yagtiga, and finishes off the T-34 with an HE round to the commander's hatch. The very last enemy is a little AMX who probably thinks that using an E-50 to scout is cheating. Cool, the E-50 sure isn't stealthy, but apparently you don't need stealth to be a good scout. This episode's top gun is Dagger from the Asian region. The battleground is Abbey, and matchmaking smiles on the M41 Walker Bulldog. Dagger goes looking for trouble and finds it in the form of a Comet and a T-3485. The Bulldog takes something of a beating, but drives away with the first two kills. A fresh reload and a new target. The Jagdplanter is kept busy by allies and dies without firing back. The next clip is spent punching holes into a panther thigh and finishing off a rival bulldog. The tracked IS-6 would be a perfect target, but the gun isn't ready to fire. It almost gets away, twice even, but in the end, the heavy's luck runs out. This time, Dagger waits a moment before reloading and gets a bonus kill as a reward. Enemies keep streaming into the base but now the gun really does need a fresh magazine. The enemy arty is too fast to kill from here. Dagger takes a couple of shots and reloads with heat shells. The last ally gets hunted down and our top gun is left alone against five. Okay, back in position and loaded for bear. The KV-5 rolls into view and Dagger opens fire. It's hard to tell if the heat rounds made a difference, but three weak point hits blow up the massive heavy. Three artillery tanks and a TD to go. Two of the SPGs invade the circle and Dagger clips them down from ambush. The T25-2 is found and finished off with a single shell. Then the last SPG is spotted on the eastern road. Dagger races around the map and catches the opponent facing the wrong way. Good game. 
A nice workout for the fierce little bulldog. Well played, Dagger! Our crucial contribution comes from the North American region where Hardcase Marksman drives the angry Terrier E25 tank destroyer on cliff. The E25 dashes to the center of the map and starts pumping shells into an enemy column. Repeated ammo rack hits even manage to blow up a huge Oni Heavy. Marksman guns down a T-150. Then moves out from behind the bushes and goes looking for victims. The next couple of targets refuse to stay still and be killed. But this IS fails to find cover. Marksman takes the initiative and charges at the AMX M4. The attack goes well, but the E25 starts taking fire from the lighthouse. The Chaffee responsible decides to stand and fight and becomes kill number four. A T1 Heavy tries to make trouble, but an allied M12 blows it up. The RT would need help back at the base, but Marksman is busy saving another ally from a tank destroyer. The TD blows up with the last shell, and the allied SPG dies at base moments later. Now what? There are still three artillery tanks to deal with, and the VK will have to do all the shooting. The enemy is found, and a very unusual duel begins. In the end, the FB falls to its death. No need for shells when you know judo! Marksman climbs up to the lighthouse for a better view and finds the enemy at the top. A cat and mouse game around the building ends with a narrowly avoided shot and the SPG tumbling down the cliffside. This time, Marksman even gets credit for the kill. Marksman has a good hunch about the last enemy's hiding place and makes a straight beeline for it. A little too straight as it turns out, as our crucial contributor drives full speed into a shotgun blast. The VK-3601H won't let the sacrifice be in vain. After driving away the RT, the ally goes for a capture victory. The enemy attempts a last second attack, but it misses its shot. It's GG. Nice. Getting those two SPG kills without any ammo was really something. And that was very good cooperation with a random teammate. In this week's last replay, Havoc and Astro Punk from the North American region take a pair of IS-4s onto the tundra. The IS-4s head for the Western Passage and take point as top-tier heavies should. The battle of attrition grinds on until an enemy E-100 decides to break through the lines. The way ahead would be clear, but the other end of the pass has been overrun. Astro Punk picks up a third kill by finishing off the E100, and Havoc opens the kill tally with the T57. The next order of business is taking out the Tier 9 Autoloader. The last Tier 10 of the enemy team comes in to challenge the platoon, but it doesn't last long against their combined firepower. It looks like losing that big TD has broken the enemy's back. Havoc burns a Super Persian to death and guns down a Tier 9 Waffenträger for an encore. The platoon mates gank a T-34 with brutal efficiency while their last ally is brought down by the remaining enemies. The endgame is two versus two, but the opponents are in much weaker machines. The T-10 holds its home for a while until Astro Punk drives into close range and takes it out. Havoc is down to high explosives, but that works fine for finishing off a soft-skinned CDC. Victory with five kills each. Havoc and Astro Punk got somewhat lucky with the matchmaking, but their teamwork secured a place on the show. Well played, you two! And that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Leave your comments below, and we look forward to seeing more of your best replays. I'm Luke Neller, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The next clip is spent punching holes into a Panther Dva. Dva? The next clip is spent punching holes into a Panther Spy. 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 It's hard not to do the S sound before the Tss. Spy. Panther Spy. Panther Spy. Panther Spy. The next clip is spent. Panther Spy. Panther. Panther Spy. Panther Spy. Huh, I just can't do Panther Spy. <laughs> Sigh. <laughs>